Hey guys, it's Olivia Jimenez. Kevin Kenyon. Mark Wayne. We're here at the In The Moment Acting Studio After Dark. Today is actually our first video that we're going to review a film. And today we're going to go ahead and talk about the film Fences. So Fences is a, um, a film starring Denzel Washington as well as Viola Davis. Directed by Denzel Washington and written by August Wilson. The film began in April of 2016 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And then in December of 2016, it was released in the United States by the Paramount Pictures. This film is, to be honest with you, amazing and it's been nominated for numerous awards including Oscar nominations and to name them for Best Pictures, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and then also Best Adapted Screenplay. It's also received a Globe and Globe nomination for actor Denzel Washington and then also for Supporting Actress Viola Davis. So guys, what do you think about the film? I thought it was awesome. Um, what I really wanted to touch on is Denzel's dialogue in particular because um, when he's in and he's acting and he's doing his thing, he's so natural that it's like, it's real. It's not that he's acting, he's living. The plot of the movie was you have, it's focused, of course it's set in 1950s Philadelphia, yeah. which they really caught that kind of spirit of that age with their with just the, how they how they talk their drive yeah. their accents they used how they spoke about status as african americans in a mostly very segregated world still at that time but one of the fences was he was building the fence was an, analogous to him protecting him from outside death he had a fear of death but he also had a rebellion to it i guess and that's what the and but then they brought up but it's kind of flipped in a way. The definition of hit fences was kind of used against him in an argument saying some people build fences to keep people in, mm -hmm. some people build fences to keep people out. Yep. So that played into the fact that his son, he was building a fence to keep his son in mm -hmm. without without following his dreams. And then, but he's also building a fence to keep the outside world out and death out, not coming for him. So, so. And to touch on Rosa, Viola Davis. Yes. Um, to me, she's the glue uh, I mean, she's the buffer and the glue and the everything to keep. She puts it all together. Like, yeah, she, <laughs> she puts it all together. <laughs> she's, the, she's the she's the main star of this film. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it, it's it's interesting because we're touching on a time that's not like today with the role of women. Back then, of course, it's women considered the housekeepers, the yep. you know the homemakers. Mm -hmm. And so it was. It's a it's a fine line of play in this generation because you. It's politically incorrect to portray a woman like that or have that out there. However, Viola Davis plays this amazing, uh, the way she handles it, where she actually helped the identity of women through her strength mm -hmm. as a homemaker, despite the age she's living in. So how the, the producer pulled that off was ingenious, because here you have an age that was probably very sexist towards women and worth their role, but yet at the same time, Viola Davis played this character where she's strong in that role that she has, that, that society has put her into. And she yeah. handles it like a beast, and of course that's where her most passionate emotions come out, mm -hmm. you know. And to, like, to add to that, to get into the story on her role too, mm -hmm. um, as she's always like being that nurturing person, right. she's, she's very welcoming, like I said, she's, she wanted to, she's the buffer between him and her sons. Yeah. Right. Like, the ten dollar thing. She's like, can you just please give it to him? And then she like, he yeah. always takes out that envelope. And he's like, this is all I have for you. Right. Like I have yeah. no money until you give it to me. Right. And she's like, yeah. this is like a team effort constantly. That's true. That's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of in the battle with both his sons right. wanting to do two different things that he doesn't agree with. You know, exactly. because his son Corey, like you said, wanting to be an inspiral and you know, inspiring um, football star, and right. with his other son that's trying to be a musician, he's. Kind of a spoiled brat, right? right. So you can kind of say you can see in the first couple minutes of the film how he comes to visit his dad at his house, sure. and he's straight up like, "So, can I get ten bucks?" Yeah, you know. Yeah. And yeah. then he fights with Denzel about it for a couple minutes, and then you know Rose just kind of gives in right. and gives them the money, and then he kind of just gives right outside the house. Right. So I feel like Denzel is having a 
struggle trying to find also a bond within his two sons because here he comes from a background of you know living the struggle exactly. which a lot of people can resemble to and then his sons wanting everything kind of handed over to them as well too is something exactly. he you know disagrees with yeah and what was interesting was it covers this generational relationship yes. and you can i believe that that movie was it was released at a very pivotal time concerning us today where you often have these what we call the millennial generation Mm -hmm. Millennial generation, um, of course, the way they're narrated by our parents and our parents' generation is, is that we're millennials. We expect everything to be given to us. We should, we're more concerned about what people, how people like us rather than us doing hard work. So, with Denzel Washington's relationship with his son, it was very much like that. His son is trying to be an aspiring football player. Now, Denzel's character was a baseball player once upon a time. He made it into the Negro Leagues, but did not make it into the Big Leagues. Mm -hmm. He blames that off of um, possibly because of the color of skin or racism. And But the movie kind of alludes, and the, the supporting actors and actresses kind of allude to the fact that he was, he, he didn't get into it because of his age, his advanced age, but he was in denial about that. And mm -hmm. he constantly talks about his denial about that. And, but his son wants to follow his dad's footsteps. He wants to be a uh, sports star. Mm -hmm. His dad, of course, wants to be more practical in his approach to his career and, and how he's going to make his living. He wants him to learn a skill or something like that. And what happens is he's, he's trying to talk to him, his son, about, you know, get something practical. Don't chase these dreams, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas his son's more hopeful. And you can see how that plays into this time and age, you know? Mm -hmm. Work hard for what you get. Whereas in the millennial generation, we all have big dreams. And that's the thing about some millennials, we have big dreams. We, for example, we want to be actors and actresses. Yes. Some people of an older generation might say, that's not practical, you know? So it's it's a, it's a challenge of opinions between generations. So this movie is about generational conflicts between two generations. Mm -hmm. and so we saw it breaking through. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that with his other son as well too, that's trying to be an aspiring musician. musician. Yeah, that's that. true. Yeah, musician. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. that was exactly. Weird. And so it's this was the time when women struggled for their how they're seen. And what what that did back then was create the strength of the women that was brought out and Violet Davis captured that. You know, which was insane. so she was definitely the star of this film for that very reason. You know, of course Denzel Washington's always a big star in any film. Mm -hmm. And but so the two played off each other very well. You know? yeah. It's it's a movie that's it captures what life what it's like back then. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, raw. Of course, uh, yeah, yeah. Raw. That's a it's perfect raw. word. Yeah. Exactly. It's raw. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about the actors and actresses. Besides Viola Davis, which we covered, <laughs> what about the supporting actors? There's a lot of good we're not just talking about Denzel here, we're not talking about Viola Davis. There's a lot of stars in this film. In fact, everybody who entered the screen in this film or entered the uh, in view of the camera, they had their moment without a doubt. His yeah. brother. Uh, his his brother was named Gabriel Maxson. So Gabriel Maxson, yes. Gabe. Gabe. Oh yeah, Gabe. Yeah. Exactly. He played a very important part in the film, I believe, and he did absolutely amazing as an actor as well too. I feel like he really captured again real life stories. Right. And I guess again kind of like using the same word that you did being very raw as well too. My Kelty Williamson was the actor for that. Uh, last time I remember him in a movie was Free Willy. Uh, he was the parole officer of uh, the young boy in Free Willy. Oh, this, you might remember him as, actually, I just, I just forgot. He was Bubba in Forrest Gump. Was he? He was Bubba. Now, I just realized <laughs> okay. that. I just I thought so. That <laughs> I thought so. But yeah, that I was Bubba. Remember. And he was good in Bubba. Yeah. He was good in Bubba. I mean, he was good in Forrest Gump. He mm -hmm. had that same kind of, he played a... Uh, not someone disabled in Forrest Gump, but you know, he had an interesting part about him. Talking right. about shrimp, talking about shrimp, everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he has that, uh, he definitely captured your heart, that guy. Yeah, yeah. As an actor, whenever he plays anybody like that, he just captures your compassion. Yeah. And he did it this time again, he captured your compassion. Here's a guy. This actor, uh, Stephen Henderson, he is actually, he plays, he plays the same actor in the original play. The Spences is based on a play. And so he is, he plays the same actor in the play also. Mm -hmm. So he's had experience playing this role. So that's why, that might explain why it came so naturally, you know. Mm -hmm. Very true. And he's been doing this since 1983. That's because that's when Fences started. It's a, based on 1983 play nice. uh, from August Wilson. Who's, mm -hmm. uh, who's, but he was, uh, was interested in August Wilson. He was able to finish the screenplay before he died in 2005. So this wow. was this movie was a long time in the making as far as the screenplay being written. 
That's the, so the, 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 the very title, Fences, is obviously that plays in the movie the whole way. It's yeah, all about fences, exactly. so. It is. Exactly. It is definitely an amazing, amazing film. Yeah. Not a feel-good film, though. Definitely not a feel-good film. It's not a movie you want to watch to feel good and give you... No. Where we get the, the ending open, it's worth watching. Definitely worth watching. And I encourage younger generations to watch this movie. I do as well. Especially for the fact that they don't want to. Exactly. Because they don't want to, their parents should make them watch this, in my opinion. <laughs> because, like, alright, look, you're going to take a, a break from the Transformers movie, the action movies. You're going to watch something with real hardcore lessons, philosophy, and script in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm pretty sure not only first, but you heard it here again to watch this film, Fences. Amazing, amazing film. Just like Mark had stated, it has a lot of good um, learning experiences and then also experiences inside the movie as well, too, that people can relate to. Like Kevin also said, again, very raw. So we definitely, you know, want you guys to go out, see the film, bring a friend, mom, dad, grandma, whoever you would like. Or bring on DVD when yeah. it comes out. There we'll you go. It. <laughs> it's definitely worth it. It is. So, yeah, that concludes our first episode of In the Moment Acting Studio yeah. After Dark. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.